It is debatable whether Magic is a game of luck or a game of skill. From experience, I see most who quit and move to chess state that Magic is only a game of luck. Most who continue to play the game view Magic as majorly skill, yet has enough luck that you can get screwed over enough times to miss top 8. However, optimistic players who really want to improve their game view Magic as a game of pure strategy, a game of untarnishable statistic calculations. And yet... Let's face it, magic is at least part luck. However, I have surmised from personal experience that the percentage of luck is small enough that you can make up for it in card choice prior to the game, gameplay, and sideboarding. If you're a good enough player, you have the ability to look back at the match and not see that you simply got flooded or unlucky, even if you kept the perfect hand. The fact is, somewhere, you made a mistake. In the current limited format, most often, a wrong decision is made during combat. Let's say you're playing an 8-person draft queue, and you have a 2-2 gnarled pack on the board, playing mono green with 2 cards in hand, 2 ground swells, and 3 lands on board. Your opponent, who is sitting on the other side of the table from you, is playing red green and controls a 3-3 gnarled pack, 4 lands including 1 fetch land, and has 2 cards in hand. Neither of you have had lands enter the battlefield this turn. It's his attack phase, so logically he attacks. He attacks based on the ideal situation that you have no response in hand. Now, do you block? Well, the goal here is to lose the least cards and the least life respectively. However, what cards could they have in their hand? Being that he's playing red and green, in Zendikar Zendikar Worldwide Draft, he has a 2.3 times as likely chance of having an instant response that will help him win or tie the card advantage war. And even though I'm no numerophiliac, let's view the potential outcomes in numbers. If you block, and then he plays Burst Lightning in response to blocks, but you play Groundswell in response, the situation becomes a tie. If you block but they respond with a Groundswell without popping their fetch land, and you respond with two Groundswells and discover that the second card in their hand was a land, which he plays on the second main phase, you're now ahead. If you block and play a Groundswell, which is responded to by a popped fetch land and Searing Blaze, which you respond to with a Groundswell, which is then responded by a Groundswell, you lose 3 life and 3 cards to there too. But, based on such limited information, which path do you take? Well, if the right decision were equivalent to Heaven or God, Mahatma Gandhi would say something like, he who would, in his own person, test the pact of God's presence can do so by a living face. And since the face itself cannot be proven by extraneous evidence, the safest course is to believe in the modern government of the world, and, therefore, in the supremacy of the modern law. Which is to say, most often the obvious decision is the right one. But it always pays to look below the surface.